seems like the recording is taking a while yeah it's ready okay so uh yeah so we were just talking about practical things and i said like any ministry the first and most important thing is why am i doing what i'm doing so we ask ourselves that question then other practical things would be mm -hmm. to be prepared um regularly you could you could be in prayer and uh, meditation of god's word fasting so that way it will it will uh, strengthen us to minister the next thing is to be confident okay the reason is uh, we we have studied god's word we have understood that uh, christ has given authority to us as believers so if we know it we understand it uh, then no matter what the demons try to tell us you know, it will it will not affect us okay um, because you see demons they have a tendency to cause fear they have a tendency to intimidate uh, people so there can be comments like uh, who do you think you are how many how many uh, uh, demons have you faced or oh, anything they might just say something which can shake us or they might uh, uh, you know say things like we have been here for 20 years you know how you ca you cannot evict us so they also have a tendency to lie you see because they don't have any integrity uh, so that way uh, if anyone who is who is uh, engaging in ministering deliverance if they are getting distracted oh the demon is saying this and the demon is, is saying that then you know they their confidence will be affected so best thing is we know that we have our authority we should be uh, strong in it we should be strong in what god's word says about us we should be strong in what the cross of the lord jesus has done for us and it's like you listen to what the enemy is saying but don't give it a thought you just be like okay i'm going to ignore what satan is uh, saying what these demons are saying okay you've been there 20 years that's okay i have the authority you know i come to you in the name of jesus and jesus has conquered you 2000 years ago on the cross of calvary so we are adamant on the word of god no matter what the demons say and they have a tendency okay so uh, be prepared in case they uh, try to intimidate us that uh, we talked about having the sense of anger against what the what the devil is doing right so a spiritual uh, anger now this spiritual anger you need not show it in the natural emotions yes sometimes we could be very firm in the way we command the devil uh, see that is understood that is understood that it's not a fleshly anger or a, you know a fleshly um you know kind of provoking that you feel provoked it's not a fleshly thing it's a spiritual thing and it's a matter of the heart so when it comes to deliverance you know again there's a lot of misunderstanding people think that we have to scream and shout and uh, you know show that anger and only then you are effective in in dealing with the demons but not necessarily you know you could have great authority in the heart and in the spirit and uh, you might be firm in what you say you might just say you know i cast you out in the name of jesus but you're not shouting it still works because authority is flowing from the heart and not the loudness of my voice or the expression of my emotions you know that that's not the place from where the authority is flowing okay so uh, don't worry too much about you know being uh, very you know appearing bold uh, the way people will the way people assess boldness so you might not be shouting and screaming and yet you, know, you can cast out the demon so we can remember that and as far as possible it is best to avoid shouting and screaming because you know it kind of disrupts the environment isn't it anyway so uh, if you can use your authority in a more uh, calmer way why not but be firm be firm when you command when you rebuke rebuke be firm in your tone in your uh, ministering of you know those uh, words 
so that is something we can keep in mind then avoid uh, speaking in arrogance okay so this also tends to happen um, see we are so confident in what jesus has done for us isn't it so sometimes what happens believers take it to the extreme and you know they start arguing with the devil they start arguing with the demons oh what are you going to do uh, oh you're going to do that okay do it you know it it just becomes very unnecessary so taunting taunting is uh you know provoking provoking uh, the demons challenging the evil spirits and saying uh, i i i'm not afraid of you uh, you can do whatever you want challenging demon spirits being very arrogant okay that is not what we see uh, in uh, the bible we don't see jesus doing things like that so please avoid you know such things uh, and it serves no purpose what is our our focus here our focus is uh, god loves this person god wants this person to be free from the destruction that uh, demons bring what what does demon de uh, you know the kingdom of darkness do for people only destruction the devil has come to steal kill destroy the demons went into the pigs and what happened you know they went jumped into the water they died so the work of the enemy is just destruction pure destruction and we are concerned about that okay if this individual is demon possessed we want them to be set free we want them to experience uh, the abundant life in christ jesus so that is the reason i am doing what i am doing in ministering deliverance so where is the question of me getting distracted and challenging taunting you know being rude to the demon spirits avoid all of that okay so then what should i say you know if i shouldn't be saying uh, you know provoking things to the devil what what is it that i should say see when we face um, this situation and we are ministering deliverance good thing to do will be to keep declaring the truth of god's word okay because then it again builds more confidence in us it builds more confidence in our team it builds confidence in the listener the person whom you are ministering to and it will uh it will uh, weaken the the hold of the devil because every time the devil hears the declaration of god's word that jesus has won the victory on the cross what's happening his foundations are shaking and he doesn't want to listen to it you know the way he told jesus you go away from here that's what he will try to do to us he'll say no stop don't say all these things because that is the truth that satan does not want to listen to so in a ministry time when i'm there ministering to a person who is demon possessed here are the things i say i declare the lordship of the lord jesus christ then i declare uh, the uh, about the work of the cross okay then i declare boldly the word of god over that individual so you know i can if that person is a believer i can say you know you are blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places you know you are seated with christ in the heavenly places this is the truth of god's word what has happened to this believer who he is in christ jesus right or if the person is an unbeliever you can you know just pour out the love of god on them you know jesus died for you uh, god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son for you so begin to proclaim god's word and god's truth in that situation okay there are times uh, i don't know if you have observed but there are times that in churches and in fellowships people sing songs okay so that's also a good thing because singing we know that praise remember we said praise is a weapon against the enemy so we we raise up praises to god and the kingdom of darkness starts to shake so we can sing because singing praising worshiping god like jehoshaphat we saw that isn't it in 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 the book of chronicles he went praising god magnifying god and that confused the enemy and defeated the enemy so in the same way when we lift up praises we can also sing and minister uh, during this time of ministry that will also weaken the hold of the devil on that child of god um and also another thing about singing is that it is a declaration you know it is a declaration declaration is to to put it out there and say hey this is it 
Jesus has won the victory. You're making that statement. It is a settled statement, established statement. And, you know, we sing that. We, we sing that, oh, Jesus has won the victory on the cross. So what's happening? Declarations are being spoken into the realm of the spirit and uh, Satan can't stand it. You know, his kingdom will begin to shake. So we can also sing, you know, we can sing about the cross. You know, the cross has the final word. There are so many songs, isn't it, that that talk about the power of God, the blood of Jesus. Um uh, we, we can sing about the victory of the blood of Jesus. There is power, there is power, wonder-working power. So what is happening? We're not simply singing some songs, but the truth is being declared. And that is a weapon against the enemy. enemy. So he is being destroyed by spiritual weapons and he has to leave the place. So that's what is happening when we are ministering. Um, uh, deliverance. Now, something to avoid in what we are saying is, I, I think we have talked about it earlier. You know, sometimes people just use um, repetition, thinking that it will scare the devil. But sometimes it's because we are so scared that we just want to feel better. We say hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. So sometimes we do that. But why are we doing that? If we are doing that with understanding, that, yeah, I'm declaring, when I say hallelujah, I'm truly de declaring the power of the cross. It makes sense. But if I'm saying it like, okay, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Like I'm just doing it to, to kind of um, fill, fill up the time with something. I have to say something. And it makes me feel better. I don't feel scared anymore. Then it doesn't make much of a difference to the devil also even the devil knows oh this person is very scared right so uh yeah so just think what what we are doing vain repetition will not help against the devil okay uh yeah are you all okay is this good i, I know it's more practical so it'll be a little more engaging and interesting for all of you are you are you okay class Learning something. Okay, nice. Okay, so uh, if you also have any thoughts, any any experience, please feel free. You can always stop me in between, uh, and uh, you know we will be happy to listen to what you have. Uh, for now, I'll, I'll just continue. So this is it. So some practical things to keep in mind. Okay, next is. Mm, we definitely need the cooperation of the person whom we are ministering to. So if you recall, we said that the manifestation of, um, you know, uh, the demonic oppression or demonic possession can be such that a person is manifesting sometimes or, you know, like partially. But there can be like a full-time manifestation. So we saw about those um, men in gathering, uh, right? Uh, we, we, I mean, um, uh, Nikki read that, uh, where we saw there were two fierce men. I'll just look at the reference again. Yeah, um, it was Matthew 8, where we, we saw, you know, two men who were so fierce that nobody even went that side. So that tells us that the individuals were probably, you know, completely taken over by the demon spirit. So people can come to a place of insanity. We call it insanity where there is no more control on the mental faculties. So let's say a person is in this situation, no more control on the mental, their decision making capacity. We go to minister to them. You know, in that situation, we are fully in control. We are fully in charge. And we tell the devil what to do. Okay. Uh, but let's say the mental faculty of a person is still mm, functional. It is important to um, teach that person that, you know, they will, they, their life will that Jesus loves them, that he wants to set them free and they don't have to, uh, you know, continue with the oppression of, of uh, demons in their life. And so bring them to a place where they say, I want to be free. Or in other words, the will of the human being where that person says, yes, I want to be free. 
that is very very important otherwise what happens is see we can do especially when it comes to deliverance we can do our part we can cast out the demon but if that person is not willing one is the demon may not come out because that person is saying no you stay so will of the person is very important our entire effort can be a failure because that person is not allowing you know the the demon to come out that is one thing now let's say if if at all you know the demon comes out now that person will not be willing to change their ways so remember we said that in matthew 12 we saw how the spirits go uh, and if the house is not clean then you know uh, if, if it's not put in order then he comes back that spirit comes back with seven other spirits more wicked than than them and the state of that person is worse than what it was earlier so the all these things are there so which is why working with the individual i remember once uh, one of you asked the question you know uh, about a person and uh, making that person experience freedom teach god's word talk to them counsel them that's also important it doesn't work like yeah bring them okay cast the spirit okay next 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 it's not as you know i know there are maybe some crusades or somewhere where you cannot talk to the people but in general you know this whole ministry of deliverance it it has to involve the will of the person if it does not involve the will of the person it's like a job half done okay so uh working with the person they should come to a place where they say okay pastor pray for me i want to be free then it will work okay and even after they are free they will pursue a holy life that then you know they'll continue strong in the lord so the will of the person is very very important then next is mm, uh we would need to remove any objects okay so why does it help you know sometimes when we are praying for people we will observe that uh, they might have uh, uh, some threads certain color threads or they might have um, a chain they might have uh, some rings something they but those objects are in recognition of their commitment or their worship to a certain god or you know a certain spirit now with that object on their body when we try to minister deliverance sometimes we will notice we are doing everything it's almost like the spirit is coming out but it's not coming out because what has happened is there is a dedication that has been made or there is a commitment that has been made with the spirit that okay with this object that this person now belongs to you so you know some people like to use the term legal rights so for the devil or the demons they have a legal right now we are saying we have the legal right jesus has won the victory on the cross but what did we learn about satan what did we learn about demons we said they trespass trespass is here is the line don't cross the line they will cross it okay so they are they love to trespass and you know for them to conveniently trespass they need some open doors and things like this you know commitments dedications and you know words that are spoken over people uh, things like that you know they they all are an open door and satan will nicely trespass sit there and you're trying to evict 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 not coming out not coming out because he'll say hey look at look at the commitment it's there it's uh, and they are wearing a, an object that uh, you know it it affirms the commitment how can i go out i can't go out because this person has given me permission so many times when we are when we are uh, we casting out demons we have to be observant mm, just observe notice if there are any open doors open doors sometimes you can pick it up uh you know externally you can pick it up and say oh brother can you tell me something more about you know these things that you are wearing then they will tell they'll say oh yeah 10 years back my mother had taken me to this place and we made this prayer 
so then you can tell them hey look this is what is holding those demons back you know in you uh, can we pray a prayer then you pray a prayer to revoke that uh, commitment or that dedication that offering uh, and then you also tell them and best thing to do is you don't remove okay uh, or uh, we should not do that don't go and forcefully say that ring on your hand that is the reason these demons are not leaving you come i'll remove that ring now in the name of jesus leave demon see also we live in a time where you know everything matters uh, who knows somebody is observing you and they say oh this person forced them to remove the dedication you know break the dedication don't get into all that talk to the person and say are you willing if you are willing no force this is what it is you have a dedication um with the, with this in your life i cannot uh, you know uh, command the demons to come out but if you are willing pray with me we will break that dedication and if you are willing you get rid of this this object okay so then the person understands now they are convinced and they themselves you know they remove the ring or they cut the thread so they remove the chain whatever they have that is good they have done it and nobody can blame you that oh forcefully this pastor has removed you know commitment to that god or goddess don't get into trouble <laughs> okay so uh, in this manner you know objects you get rid of objects then it is easy to minister the deliverance there's no trespassing that the enemy can do because shut door is shut that dedication is cancelled okay so that's also something we can keep in mind so um when uh, you know when when we minister deliverance right that's when we have to be so sensitive to the spirit sometimes we just say and the spirit comes out and we are so excited joyful but there are other times where we wonder mm, okay it's it's not happening why is it not happening i'll come to that you know there is a whole process which we can follow most step by step we we'll look at it but now in general i'm telling us so there can be situations like that also and in those times we really need the guidance of the holy spirit to minister deliverance okay now coming to the next practical aspect sometimes you know the demons are very like they are stubborn they want to do different things to stay so they will try their best to you know not let go of the territory uh, so yeah they'll try intimidation but you speak god's word and you be confident or we should be confident in what uh, the cross has done for us so then i'm confident you know when i go um, before the um, whatever you know the the manifesting person the other thing that demons can do is they can try to distract us okay so distraction many different distractions can be there they'll try to manifest like this like that you know they'll do some uh, i i i remember once we had gone on most of my experiences on mission trips so we went to this one place and uh, there was a girl and she was uh, the way she was manifesting was very strange i had not seen it till that you know she was coming up with all these dance poses and she was you know she would pose like this and then again she would change it to another dance pose and then they would she would change it to another dance pose and sometimes some of these poses are you know like you're like what is going on but you see that's the spirit working in her trying to distract but still you know at that time i saw pastors were praying over her. they were not getting distracted by all this dancing that she was doing uh, yes you know they tried to stop it but she was not stopping but they continued to minister and not be distracted by the manifestation uh, sometimes these demons will distract by you know try, do something unusual so let's say the person is a vegetarian okay suddenly the demon will say i am so hungry uh, i want to eat uh, some meat bring me some meat and all the family members are like oh but this person is vegetarian uh, or maybe he's he's tired you know through this ministry time let us give him what he's asking don't get distracted these are all tactics of the devil so we have to be observant hey come on this person is vegetarian how can he be asking for meat 
if he is in his conscious mind so things like that sometimes demons will say i want to drink alcohol get me some alcohol then i will come out or you know uh, i want to drink water i'm so thirsty i want to drink some water so observe is it really the person who is asking or is it the demon that is asking so we have to dis- discern and if it is not the person and if it is more like the drama that the demon is creating don't get into all that you just like okay i'll continue to pray uh, you know we will minister to this individual okay so they love to distract um, and uh, we must uh, continue to be steadfast in what we are doing okay then uh, uh, when it comes to talking to the demons uh, why should we talk see sometimes it is useful because uh, let's say we are praying for somebody and uh, that demon is not coming out that time we may ask who are you and the person might uh, the demon might say i am the you know i am the goddess simply i'm saying okay i am the goddess of rain then uh, you can ask okay you know when did you when did you uh, 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 come into this person then the demon will tell you on that day when there was a prayer being offered to the uh, to the rain gods this person came here and this happened that happened so uh, and you know this person did this dedication and i entered into the per- so then what happens you understood now okay so there is a dedication i have to break the dedication for this demon to come out so that much conversation is enough sometimes when you ask the name of the demon you will get a clue what to do you know where did this demon come from um, so for the sake of ministry uh, it's okay to ask what is your name and you know some such things but beyond that to engage in a sort of a you know big conversation with demons and finding out their history not helpful because we also know that they lie so how true is Uh, the things that they are saying uh, so yeah so just bear that in mind if uh, it helps to identify origins and break strongholds then yes we can have some question answer going on between the demon and us okay uh, then learn to depend on the holy spirit mm, you see sometimes and you know uh this whole experience of casting out demons it's like you really have to depend on the holy spirit i've told us that there's no formula we may have done it a certain way uh you know in our previous ministry time but here is another ministry you know you, it manifests so different uh, from the earlier one so unless i'm relying on the holy spirit mm, i can't be successful i can't be effective okay so always rely on the holy spirit past experiences are good uh, but then discernment discernment by the spirit is so important also the gifts of the spirit okay so gifts of the spirit there is one gift known as discerning of spirits i think i shared one example with all of us of a friend of mine who had that gift manifesting so without much information externally uh, this friend was able to tell and see in the spiritual realm what is going on inside the spirit of that person and you know as we were issuing commands we could affirm that hey yeah you're right there's still a spirit inside and the way the person was behaving you know some spirit of the snake and all so there is a gift of the holy spirit as well which we can rely on let's say that you know we've asked the questions we've understood the origin we have broken the dedication we have removed the object so much we have done but still you know the this demon spirit is not coming out uh, you can just say holy spirit you know or start to pray in the spirit because that is one of the ways in which we are stirring up the gifts of the spirit you know praying in tongues always helps uh, so you just take some time pray in tongues if you're as a team you could just say okay guys let's pray let's pray begin to pray in the spirit so what happens you're stirring up the gifts of the spirit within you and then some of the other gifts begin to 
manifest discerning of spirits word of wisdom word of knowledge you know it begins to manifest maybe somebody in the team will say oh i see this person they had gone here they had done this so then you basically you're getting to the root of the problem how to set this person free that's the question that we are trying to answer here so discerning of spirits depend on the holy spirit then uh, don't let physical manifestations disturb you i i already mentioned all kinds of manifestations can be there like you know i i told you right like i've seen somebody uh, ride like a snake on the floor uh and, and you're like whoa what is this why is this person behaving like this but don't let that bother you uh i have seen people just shaking and literally hitting themselves on the wall and on the furniture on the floor to the extent that they can injure somebody had to hold that person to not injure themselves okay so all kinds of ways i and i just mentioned someone's dancing or you might have somebody shrieking loudly or mm, sometimes people also say uh, uh, that you know appearance changes appearance changes maybe this is a lady but um, suddenly the features start to appear like a man okay uh, a more sharper kind of uh, features uh, the voice might change You're talking to a lady, but the lady is talking in a man's voice. So many manifestations are there of demons and demon spirits. But this is all not to scare us. We know demons are like this. They want us to get scared. But the whole point is, we will not give in to this. So all this is just distraction tactics because they understand that here you are trying to set this person free. They don't want that. so they will do everything in their part to show their power but don't let that distract and sometimes people foam from their mouth um sometimes so many things are there uh, you know you, you all must have also seen so many ways in which uh, demons begin to manifest so yeah then uh uh also we can see because we are talking about manifestations we should not have the misunderstanding that every demon possession uh will have a manifestation okay sometimes there may be no manifestation but still there is the influence of demons and similarly the casting out of demons when the demon is cast out we've seen in general we've seen right that the spirit shook them the person convulsed they shriek they uh, fell down with a shout and the demon came out of that person in general we see that but there can also be times when the spirits just leave quietly so uh just know that if they can leave quietly so i remember uh, in my uh, one of our previous courses uh there was a lady and she was concerned about her husband uh and you know she had something to say that okay maybe he has uh influence of some demons how to cast it out but another thing was that they had just started attending church very regularly and learning god's word so what i told them is you know what first you just continue in god's word because he was not the kind who would come you know to church to get prayed over and also because of that i said okay just continue in church listen to god's word every you know listen to god's word at home have family prayer encourage your family to read the word of god you know what happens is when we are just walking in obedience also these strongholds these bondages start breaking okay and just very recently i was talking to the same person again and i was just saying you know like how are things now she said oh my goodness there is such a big change and it's not just you know a change that comes only by the word of god and all but she felt that there is a demonic presence but also what happens is you know sometimes these demon the strongholds just break and demons leave and we don't even know so many people come to church they are being set free they are being set free maybe in that service or you know as they attend a couple of services god's word is being preached over their lives strongholds are being broken you know as we pray prayers as we command uh, you know the work of the spirit we may not realize 
but deliverances are taking place even in that manner so don't always think that oh there is no manifestation so nothing happened no there may not be a manifestation okay but you could look at the life of the individual also to to tell that yeah you know something has taken place here yeah uh, and uh, when we talk about manifestation also remember um that some manifestation can be because of the work of the spirit i don't know if you have heard this but uh, when we are praying for people they say things like oh i can feel the fire do no, don't put the fire on me it is burning it is burning so you see for a for a person who is ministering we have to be very alert and is this the demon spirit manifesting is this what is what is this person talking about fire burning go away from me it could be the holy spirit right so which spirit is this i need discernment so be very observant observe the person observe the behavior observe the words and most importantly depend on the uh, holy spirit guidance okay um in our hearts so that's how we will differentiate we should not confuse the two no demonic and a uh, holy spirit don't confuse the two then uh sometimes uh, it's also that you know in our christian circle it can get very confusing because um, people we call it conditioned response conditioned responses you know in every church service when people are seeing oh everyone is shaking everyone is moving like this they are uh, you know saying these words people subconsciously pick up those actions so each time we pray for them they might shake now why are they shaking are they shaking because you know there is a demon spirit are they shaking because they are filled with the holy spirit or are they shaking because they are shaking there is no spirit involvement here it's just a conditional response that's how they they pray each time okay so we need discernment right we need discernment and we need to figure out why is this happening and then address it accordingly right okay so i think that is also quite clear yeah so just figure out whether it's really a demon spirit uh, then when it comes to ministering deliverance um uh, you know there are times when all the experiences of jesus are like that you know come out and the demon comes out so is that our standard yes we have to aim for it the moment i say come out let it come out that's it but you see that in practice because we are also learning right we are learning to to um uh, release the authority of god we are learning to manifest the power of god uh, we don't seem to get it in the first step but that's okay that's okay because um we it's just getting better and better okay so they, they don't don't let that discourage uh, we shouldn't let that discourage us but we keep going okay we keep going ministering and sometimes you notice that you know demon spirits are so stubborn that maybe you, you have ministered today you planned okay today is friday i am going to go two hours pray for this brother with my team and it's going to be fine two hours you prayed you did everything whatever i'm discussing nothing is working so you say okay what okay fine i'm going to come tomorrow maybe you went next day and prayed nothing happened you know there are times when people minister for a week two weeks you know a, a very extended long period of time to an individual because you know these spirits also can be very stubborn but from our side we are very clear we want this person to be free we want the person to be free as quickly as possible you don't take too much time that's not uh, what we are saying but it can happen that uh, it takes a while to um, help someone be free okay so don't get discouraged um, don't quit 
it's easy for people to get discouraged are i'm praying but god's power is not being released through my life okay leave it this doesn't work i took the course in believers authority demonology i think what what i it's not happening right it's not manifesting in my life don't think like that because you see we are as i'm saying again and again we are learning and we have to take the steps and as we keep trusting god as we keep exercising our faith you know as we keep depending on the holy spirit it gets you know clearer and stronger and better and even if the spirit is a stubborn spirit we we say okay i'm not going to quit god's word doesn't change isn't it and jesus did it in one step maybe that is something that i'm not able to figure out or we just need to pray some more or we just need to fast some more whatever it is we are willing to do it this brother or this sister needs to be set free so that is the attitude and the approach which we can carry don't give up don't give up okay and demons have a tendency to be very stubborn mm, yes next uh, as whenever possible it is good to work as a team okay so uh, if someone tells you like i know uh, nikki is now serving in a church uh, john also uh, will be you know serving in a church so some of you i, I know zeli zeli and that that team so it's good for you to gather some leaders or believers and then go minister as far as possible try to do it like that do it as a team uh, but let's say you know you're far away nobody's there then okay understood you have to minister alone well and good but try to work as a team as far as possible because then what's happening you're all, you're all praying together you know you can all pray in the spirit together then you can all depend on the holy spirit the holy spirit you know in a in a team setting maybe he reveals something to one person reveals something to another person uh, so it it works so beautifully and you know all of you singing together declaring god's word together it really helps and another thing in a team setting is it's good to have a leader okay for that ministry session reason being all of us can get very excited so some one will say come let's declare god's word another will say no 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 let's command you know come out in jesus name or you know somebody else will say hey no no let's find out whether there is a dedication so then what happens lot of confusion takes place so the focus for the ministry mm, will be affected so instead of that what we can do is we can say okay i'm just taking simple example okay Nick, nikki is going with his team so nikki is going to lead so then what happens nikki will tell us what to do okay team let us first pray together everyone's praying together and then he says okay now we are going to take authority and i'm going to command the the demon spirit to come out and then you can just tell your team uh, please keep praying in the spirit so then you take authority i take authority in jesus name i command you to come out so everyone is flowing the way the leader is flowing so then when there is unity there is more power you know so it's good to have a team but the team best to have a leader and everyone listens to the leader otherwise you know as it is we're trying to figure out how to get this demon out there'll be more chaos and confusion if you know people start moving in their fleshly zeal sometimes there is a fleshly zeal right like oh i should be noticed and i should be the one who is issuing the command or i should be the one telling them what is the core issue uh, you know in this situation so that fleshly zeal becomes problematic so to train the team also in such a way maybe once or twice when uh, you know you we take our teams with us we just show them how it's done and we just instruct them and say okay guys now please pray or let's all sing together or this then we stop and we ask them are you sensing anything is there something you want to share what is holy spirit telling you so then when you guide the team in a proper way and everyone is flowing together it becomes so powerful very very powerful so unity of the team also is so important so we can keep that in mind so submission to the leader let's put it that way very clearly the team should submit to the leader then only it is effective otherwise uh, satan can find loopholes and make it problematic for us all right so now coming back to uh post deliverance 
So in post deliverance, as I've been saying, uh, there needs to be, uh, you know, equipping of that person. So we'll always see, okay, is this person believer? If not, teach them about God, set, uh, help them to accept Christ. Uh, if not, or let's say if the person's already a believer, then, uh, you know, some sessions where you try to guide them, you know, why is it important to live a sinless life, uh, keep the doors shut to the devil. So we call it post deliverance care. So where we equip the person and strengthen the person, then we might say, okay, brother, you better, uh, I know this church, this, there is a very good church here and know that pastor they teach the word of god why don't you start attending that church so then the person will be strengthened in their spirit man they will be filled with the holy spirit uh, remember matthew 12 verses 43 to 45 where the demons go and then they come back uh, once again to attack the same person so when that happens they will find that the place is clean you know uh, and uh, and so the person can continue strong but in incidents where somebody has been set free and they were not at all ministered to after the deliverance there is a possibility for a we call it you know relapse in uh, medical terms and all so once again falling back into sin and opening the door to uh, demon spirits so all these things can be avoided if there is post deliverance care yeah, and in post deliverance care, mainly we will guide them on, uh, you know, salvation, uh, being filled with the Holy Spirit. We will guide them on, uh, uh, you know, maybe some uh, uh, sins in the person's life. They might want to open that up to us and share. So then at that time, we can tell them, look, it is because of this that demons are coming. So, you know, how about we? pray to shut the door and uh, how can sometimes people might need more help you know counseling prayer regular prayer so much so we offer all that to strengthen them and get rid of you know beelzebub is like the lord of the flies why do flies come we've discussed that when there's garbage flies come how to avoid the flies from coming get rid of the garbage so we don't want the demon to come back get rid of sin close the door no problem anymore. So you know, things like that. So people need to be equipped, educated, ministered to. We have to work with them to strengthen them so that they can be strong believers. Okay, so let me just uh, stop here. We have uh, other sections here on you know, one-step approach deliverance, process approach deliverance. We will take this up in the next class. And then there's a little bit about uh, strategic level uh, warfare. Excuse me. Sorry about that. Yeah, so for today, I hope, um, you know, we've um, gained some insights. Uh, we can wrap up with a word of prayer if there are no questions. Okay, so let's just pray then. Um, I request anyone who can, please go ahead, pray. Okay, uh, maybe Zeli. Zeli, can you please pray? Okay, Pastor, uh, let us pray. Father God, we want to thank you so much for this uh, wonderful session that we had. Lord, we want to thank you for the truth which has been taught to us by our Pastor, Lord, about our authority, Lord God. Uh, Holy Spirit, we continue on to lead us, guide us, and also teach us, Lord, as we exercise this authority in the ministry, Lord. You help us, Lord. You bless each one of us, Lord. We thank you. We bless you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Sally. Thank you, everyone. And uh, next class is also going to be very practical. So I encourage you, if you can come with questions, that will be very nice. Okay. So we can uh, look at real life uh, scenarios. So anyway, um, yeah, God bless you. Have a wonderful day, a great weekend. We'll connect again uh, next Friday. Bye for now.